Atacama Desert, the driest place on earth. We're going to see the biggest gate here, which is called the Killer. Welcome back, this time from Chile. Good morning, guys. We made it to Chile. We're in Santiago de Chile and we had a rough start here. I don't know if we should go into detail, but uh, four days in Chile, Santiago de Chile, were bad. <laughs> We've been feeling not so good uh, mentally and physically, and Santiago de Chile didn't make it easy. We had so many problems with our accommodations because we had to change our accommodation. The first hostel was the worst. We're gonna blend in some pictures here. The second hotel had... Now you are going into detail. Okay, yes, but maybe that's um, important to know, to understand why we are a bit in a bad mood. <laughs> the second hotel had some major issues with electricity, which cost us another day because we didn't have water, we couldn't shower, we didn't have Wi-Fi to made our research for uh, the city the other day we went to a place we wanted to visit and it was closed although on the internet it said it's always open so in total we didn't do anything we didn't film anything <laughs> and now is our last day in Santiago de Chile we're currently having breakfast and then we're flying to Calama this afternoon and then we're gonna drive to San Pedro de Atacama so hopefully San Pedro de Atacama will treat us better and we'll have some good days in Chile and we'll end this trip with a good impression of the country oh, oh baby don't cry After driving for more than an hour in pitch black, we arrived in San Pedro de Atacama. We have now arrived in San Pedro de Atacama and we checked into our accommodation yesterday. We have booked five nights to explore the Atacama Desert, the driest place on earth. And right now we are on our way into the city center to look for tours that we can do over the next few days. We didn't book any in advance because I read online that you can simply show up and there will be availability for all of them so that's what we're gonna do right now we were lucky enough to still find a tour for the same day we drove over a super bumpy road at an impressive speed for over an hour but we got rewarded with this peaceful place and amazing views we now views. arrived at the Baltinace Lagunas and unfortunately we don't have a lot of time here we only have one hour to explore the seven lagoons here which is not a lot because we also want to swim in them yes you can swim in them and they are really cold at least that's what the guide told us so we're gonna find out how cold they really are and if we are brave enough to swim in them Is it cold? Pretty cold, yeah. You gonna go in? Yeah, why not? Ah, um Gottes Willen! Um Gottes Willen! Okay, one more time just for you guys, just for the vlog. I don't know if my balls survive this. <laughs> We're done at the Baltinace Lagoons and now it's time for sunset and we're having a pisco sour for sunset with this 
awesome view behind me of this volcano. Um, Pisco Sour is a typical um, Chile, Chilean, Chilean drink. And then we're having some snacks with the group. There's Flo. He's freaking cold after his second swim. Third. <laughs> Third? <laughs> yes, he went three times in the lagoon. Um, I only did it once. It was super cold. <laughs> I think you need a hot shower. Uh -huh. But now let's enjoy the sunset. Desert, and we're doing our second day trip. It's super freaking cold. It's only 8 o'clock, so it's early in the morning. It's still cold, but we're also in uh, 4,000 meters altitude, and it's uh, winter here in Chile. I don't know if we already mentioned that. I think it must be minus something. It's definitely below zero. It's so cold. So we're doing a little stop here for breakfast. So cold, we've got to go inside the bus and eat our breakfast there. Can't stand the cold. I honestly don't know why we brought our long underwear and everything and then we didn't um, dress correctly for this trip. So our long, warm, nice, cozy underwear is in our suitcase in the accommodation. Nice. Quick pit stop on the road to take some photos. Absolutely beautiful here. And it's not as cold as the first stop because the wind all of a sudden is gone and the sun is super warm. So nice. This area where we are right now has the most vegetation on all the salt route that we are going to do today and it's because it's a wetland, so there's way more vegetation. And usually, if it's not winter, which it is right now, you can find flamencos, flamingos, <laughs> flamencos, uh, some other birds, because here they can find the most food. But at the moment, since it's winter and there's a lot of snow, they moved on to a different place. actually on top of a super volcano so all of this here is a super volcano that could actually explode because it's active and all of the rocks that you can see here like this rock formation or the other rock formations here this is all lava it's all made of volcanic ashes <laughs> So this is the only plant that grows here and it is uh, food for the llamas or vacun vacunias. I think they're called vacunias. And it is, ouch, it is not soft at all. I can't imagine that they are eating this and that there are any um, nutrients inside. So dry. But this plant makes a beautiful landscape because everything is yellow, orange, dotted. The next day started very early. We were lucky that our tour to El Tatio took place because the road was closed the days before due to heavy snowfall. When we arrived, it was freezing cold. 
For sunrise today, we came to the third largest geyser field in the world called El Tatio here in Atacama. And the reason we are so early is because the geysers are more active in the early hours of the day because it's colder and it's actually minus 17.5 degrees Celsius <laughs> right now. So it's super freaking cold. But if I'm honest, it doesn't feel as cold as the other trip because it's way less windy. So now let's go and check out the geysers. Super excited. By the way, that's not true. It feels colder and I'm struggling to hold the camera still because I'm shaking. <laughs> the water of the geysers is 80 degrees and it is boiling not at 100 degrees because of the altitude. So because of the altitude, it's boiling quicker and you have to be really careful and not get too close. So now we're at the field of four geysers. Later we're going to see more, but here we're going to see the biggest geyser, which is called the killer. But this is not the killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> and it's named the killer because several people have died here because they got too close, they fell into the boiling water, I don't know. At the end of the trip, I could cross one thing off my bucket list, seeing pink flamingos in their natural habitat. 